Uncle T. Guess who woke up? Fugilo Malamban. Aye! Tala Fugilo Malamban. Renjua, one million subscribers. Tala Wafugilo Thank you so much, man. It's an honor to be here. Oh, wow, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. Never be back on radio. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I've always wanted to say? Yeah. Uh, good morning to you and your listeners. You know they all say that. <laughs> Spot on, spot on. Yeah. It's a fantastic morning, man. You're a millionaire now. Yeah, not in the monetary ah, sense. Oksalai. Yeah. You missed the fill up too, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How does it feel? Oh, man, it's it's a out-of-body experience. I think even till this day, it hasn't registered. Uh, for me, I don't know about you, so, but for me on Sunday, it was probably the best day of my life, you know? Yeah. Because, uh, um, you know, with everything that happened leading up to the event, sure. but also just being in that space where... There were so many people and it was just full of love and everybody that I loved was there. My family mm -hmm. drove from Venda and uh, Naledi's family was there. Uh, the team that I work with was there. Mm -hmm. So literally like everybody in this world that I love was in that room for me, which was really, really so you special. So you see what happens uh, when you go on one knee and become a man. <laughs> You become a guest on the best tea. Yeah, you know. You, you should know have told me I would have done it a long time ago. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, he did you. She said no. <laughs> he did it like three times and she said no. How many times? Yeah, three times. Jeez. Is it? <laughs> Good time, lucky. Oh, wow. Good time, lucky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Why did you do it three times? Uh, the first time, I don't know, man. I think uh, maybe because uh, I met my lady when she was 21. Uh, and then a year later, I proposed and she said no. I think maybe she was still young, trying to find herself as well, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and then the second time, I don't know, man, I think maybe it had to do with like um, um, insecurities when it comes to marriage. Because okay. uh, of what she had seen from her friends, yeah. maybe family members. So she was a bit skeptical. Uh, but uh, now we older, wiser and it, it just was the perfect time. And witnessing that, Saul, I mean, uh, as much as this was a millionaire's party, you know, yeah. so to speak, and I mean, this was the icing on the cake for me. This this really made me, you know, tear up a bit because I felt like this man um, is not pulling tricks like MacGyver anymore. He's <laughs> becoming a real, real, real man. And you were there to witness it. Yeah. The stage was set, I think, for it. Like she said, it was the best evening, evening of his life. And I mean, what a... There's no other better way. There's no other better occasion you know to actually do it uh there i didn't see it coming you know we just, is it it was a surprise to everyone i was about yeah. to ask you that that maybe you, you you as a team maybe knew no the guys were like no 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 uh, leave the family alone which made sense right maybe they we're gonna do a close curtains yeah. with mac and his family and then they I'm not even looking at the stage, you know, I'm just talking. I think it was Bra Sipogamini. Mm. And then Gigi, wah, I'm like, hey, Mac, there he is on one knee. And it makes sense, man. Like, I mean, the fact that he knew from the first year yeah, yeah, how many yeah. guys proposed within a year of dating someone, you know? Mm. Um, so I think the stage was set. It was just a cherry on top, man. It was beautiful. Um, I think we today, uh, like I said, as 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 Kaya, we we celebrating twenty six years of being on air. Yeah. Um, radio said no to you, uh, MacGyver. I'm oh, sorry, McG. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand when you said radio is dying. Mm. And and when something dies, there's an opportunity, right? And you saw that gap. Tell me about that moment. Um, when you're like, ah, I'm going to use my couch. Uh, for me, it wasn't even based on like uh, um, uh, foresight or like uh, I saw an opportunity. It wasn't really that deep. Mm. Uh, it was, I was faced with a challenge and usually what I like to do is I don't focus on the negative. I'm a solution-based mm. kind of person. Always been. Always, always been. So if I come uh, to a struggle, I don't focus too much about the struggle. It's is about, it? okay, cool. What can I do now? What's the solution? So at Where the do you time, get that from? And please don't lose your trail of thought. I'm curious now. Yeah. Um, I think it's from my mother, eh? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, even at school, if, like, 
uh, kids who are bullying me or whatever, she'd be like, okay, cool, what are you going to do about it? You know? Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, even um, when I got my TV gig uh, at Crazy, mm. I saw Bo Saifo, uh, Urusani Ravere yeah, yeah, yeah. on your TV. And I'm like, mom, hey, I want to be like them just on TV. Yeah. She's like, okay, cool. Well, there's a new station starting. It's called ETV. Here are the offices. And I literally got in a taxi that same day, <laughs> barefooted. <laughs> And, and barefooted, took, yeah, barefooted. Because in in Venda, like barefoot, we walk around barefoot. It's, yeah, 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 it's yeah. normal, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got in the taxi by myself, went to Santon, um, met up with the CEO. I'm like, I want to be on TV. Uh, he took me to an audition the same day, and the sure. next day I started my first show. So it's literally just been like that all my life. So like, maybe soil is a vendor thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I maybe mean, there's something in that. That's that. how he was a shoe in barefoot <laughs> in the industry. Kind of packed out, but why weren't you having shoes on, bro? <laughs> no, man, I just come. I just come from Venda, bro. So oh. like, in Venda, walk around barefoot, man. It's not a big thing, you know. Oh, so you? Oh, damn! I didn't know that. I'm first time finding out that you you like were raised in Venda to a certain age. Yeah, and moved. yeah, oh, wow. yeah. Makes sense with yeah. Granny, right? Yeah, okay, uh, makes I was sense. With my that's why. That's why the best tea, Papa. <laughs> you learn a thing or two. Here. Yeah. So my grandmother raised me and then I, I moved in with my aunt who was there on Sunday as well, you know? Oh, cool. Which is beautiful, oh, which is beautiful, beautiful. yeah. Would, would you regard that as a full cycle moment? I would, definitely. Without a shadow of a doubt. Definitely. Because I can imagine, Saul, I mean, um, you still have the pleasure, uh, Mac, of having your mom, right? Yes, yes, yes. Saul, um, what would be your full cycle moment? Mom is no longer around, but what would it be for you? Damn, that's yo, hey, hey, Uncle T. Ah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm far from my feelings. Yeah, that's 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 yeah. Yo, 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 yo. Man, I don't know, man. Like, I think maybe my seeing my daughter, you know, come of age, graduate, yeah. which is the one thing my mom didn't see, you know, seeing my ah. daughter live out her dreams and uh, fulfilling them. Because, yeah. Like with my mom, I mean, she didn't, she wasn't here to see, yeah. for example, San yeah. Beterina. Because even for me, it was the one evening in my life where so many people turned out to celebrate, you know, me, what I'm part of, what I've been able to achieve, even though it's within a collective. But it was that one evening. And it's always sad when a parent is not there, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and everybody yeah. has brought their family with. Yeah. And, you know, you're like okay but you understand also so mm. to me that full moment would be feeling how she would have felt if she was there in the flesh That's right. but if it happens for the next generation which is my daughter so to me that would really be a, a, a i've come of, of, of a full you know circle uh, yeah. A point yeah so can't wait for that kind of day no. and it, it doesn't need to be something as grand no, no, as no. what yeah, we did yeah, you know yeah, what i mean yeah. whatever she would achieve would which would remind me which, ish, i was once here but without my mom you know what i mean when the metric results come out yeah and, you know you don't have a mom to show that yo there's the name we did it you know because it's always been just the two of us for these 18 years but when it happens to my daughter to me that will be that moment i like podcast and chill i don't ask questions that i can't answer okay <laughs> myself in particular so my full cycle moment would be exactly that so my mom was not there when i was getting married okay and i felt that was good, good that was going to be her moment to see what she has raised yes. mm. so right now i'm praying and i'm making a commitment that i must be there for all of them including my last born oh, my last born uh, is just 10 beautiful. if i can just see him be there it doesn't have to be at the altar Whatever they define as their moment, yes, I must be there for it. You know How many I mean? you got, Brittany? Five, bro. Five. Yeah. You've been rocking it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> what what <home> mama? <laughs> <laughs> Five. Yeah. <laughs> Best team, <my> <laughs> There's something in the tea. There's something boy. in the tea. There's something in the tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There by Moria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What are you not going to there? You must come with me, Mac, one day. Yeah, yeah. We should go to Fanak. Ah, definitely, man. Now. Yeah, I'll pet the title. Now, the optimist Mac G, I don't want us to lose that. You say you got that from mom. Here you are, jobless, you're home, mm. right? Mm. Basically, you are stopped doing what you're passionate about. Hundred percent. Something that comes sec like second nature, naturally mm. to mm. you. Mm. And you saying the optimist in you says, "No, find a solution." Yes. Then, 
So uh, I had bought some uh, equipment, uh, some mics, because um, um, I had been thinking about starting a podcast, right? But I never got that push or that urge to really just start it because I had the the, mm-hmm. the the radio gig. So when that was taken away, uh, my my now wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She she was like, listen, man, you've had this equipment in the garage for the longest time. Just start your own podcast. It's what you love doing. Why not do it and see where it takes you, you know? I'm like, actually, baby, you're right, you know? It's amazing what permission, and when I say permission, it's not like she gave you permission, but yeah. she allowed you to give yourself permission. 100%, mm, yeah. you know? And with that, that's when we started the first episode, and she was actually a part of it. And and from there, I think, you know, the rest is history. But it was literally about, okay, cool, I'm faced with this challenge. How do I overcome it? All right, let me do this. And to what it has become now, I would have never guessed it'd be where it's at now, you know? But mm. at that time, it was just about, okay, cool. I've got this urge and this feeling and this desire and this passion that I need to uh, uh, um, fulfill, you know? Yeah. And and then being on the mic, whether it's on a podcast with 100 people listening on radio, you know, I've done graveyard shifts where, you know, there's probably yeah, like five bro. people yeah, listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but because I'm behind the mic, my, 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 my purpose is fulfilled. Mm. And that's what it was all about at the time. Speaking on that, tell them about the story with your granny, bro, that... Get goosebumps every time, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I told this uh, at Sunbit because um, uh, my, my grandmother passed away uh, in 2010 okay. and we we're very, very close. So she was sick. She was at the hospital. I was still doing 12 to 3 at the time and I was about to do my show, but they called us at like 10. Um, and then we had to rush to the hospital because they said she's not feeling well. Yeah. We think it might be her last uh, few hours or, or yeah. minutes, you know. Uh, so when I get there, you could tell that yeah, no, she's 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 not looking good at all, you know, sure. which was heartbreaking for me because this me is and your girl, man. Yeah, we were so close. I was closer to my grandmother than I was uh, to my mother because yeah. she raised me, you know. And oh, um, grannies, man. You know what I mean. And then, um, literally, like about a minute before she passed away, she said to me, "Magaiva, do not leave the mic." That's the what? last words she said to me. Never. Yeah. And then, yeah, so so so, on the day I was wearing a jacket that she was wearing on a deathbed, and oh. I haven't and I haven't washed it, uh, uh, and I always wear it for like big things, you know. So when I got the nine four seven gig, I wore it to the audition. <laughs> <laughs> So the question, the question is, who, who really is in that audition? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I wore it on Sunbed because it was a big occasion for me. And wow. I feel like I could feel her presence. Cause, What's her name, man? Uh, Makatu Freedom Kweo. Oh. Yeah. Come the wedding, the lady's hiding that, that jersey. <laughs> She's hiding that jersey. <laughs> he was going to get married in it. Watch. <laughs> and, and I had a daughter last year, so I named her after my grandmother. Oh, wow. Out. Yeah. Wow. She's alive right now. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. didn't have done that, though. <laughs> I've named all of them after my grannies and grandfathers, and I can tell you we are taking orders left, right, and center. Yes. Yeah, so so is the case, yeah. man. I'm warning you now. <laughs> no, I feel your pain, man. Yeah? Yeah. We started uh, with Nana Tula. Who chose that? I did. I love that song, man. Comes Out for me is the best to ever do it. And the fact that he took a song <coughs> which had such... Because it's a big gamble to take such an emotional song. Mm. The original is, is it's a huge song. Even yeah. when uh, Angelic talks about it, you yeah. know, yeah. Uh, being a father and you can't provide for your kid. I think a lot of guys have, be, have been yeah. uh, there. In, in that situation, I mean? yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he was The singing. pursuit of happiness situation. Exactly. And he yeah. was singing like the rent was due. Such a special song. And then for Gabza to be brave enough to take that song and elevate it. And he truly did. And it eclipses for me the first one, you know. Wow. It's a very special song. Song, So one of the best producers we've ever seen. And he did something not a lot of producers can do. Yeah. And then Young Stana, because you thought Angelic was enough on that voice. And mm-hmm. what Young Stana did, to me it's a very special song, man. I love it. Uh, obviously written and I think directed by Something Soweto. Yes. Um, he, when we... We're doing something so it is Peter Peter's uh, album unplugged here. Angelic came through, uh, performed the song, and broke out and into tears. He, could, he, could, he couldn't hold back. Mm. And I asked him mm. why. Mm. He said, Something so it is something, man. 
something else. Something else. Mm. He he went to a place I never thought he would go to because he went exactly where I was uh, at a point in life, like you just said now. Mm. <clears throat> and I could understand how emotive um, that part was. So uh, he wrote Nana Tula? Yeah. Wrote, yeah. For real? Yeah. Jenny didn't know what to write. Yeah. And then yeah. he just asked, like, what do you care about the most? And then yeah. he, he just took it from there yeah. and he wrote it. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, bro. Oh, it makes sense because in Jelly, you keep all shasha How's that ending? Parents meeting. Nice to be responsible. Yeah. Now, you know? <laughs> like, oh, what's Jenny going to this one? <laughs> Nice, that's the same thing. Oh, makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Mac G and Saul are here, and we're celebrating this thing called radio, right? Now, the one thing we need to do after the break, I would like to hear what you have to say about this blind spot. This is Ben Watt with Sananda Matreya, and of course, the stronger man. Mac G and Saul are here. They are my guests. As we celebrate Kaya's 26, I do this every single year. We talk about the future of radio. Is there still a future? Oh, definitely, man. I think uh, 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 as much as we troll um, uh, a radio on the podcast, which is fun. Yeah. I've got to be honest. I mean, radio is not going anywhere. It is free, you know. So uh, when I say radio is dying, I think... I'm talking about the craftsmanship, the oh. the actual concept of what radio was and when it started and what it's become. Unpack that for me. You know, I think for me, um, well, from my understanding, I could be wrong, yeah. but I think when radio started and the reason why it was so big, it was always about the, the listener, you know? Come on. You know what I mean? Like, um, it was never about whoever the host is. Yeah. Everything was centered around the listener. Come on. And I think we are losing that in, mm. in this new age, you know. Mm. Um, I mean, I'll speak on my behalf. Like every time I used to do a call out, well, some were hits, some were misses. Of course. But the first question I'd always ask myself is, who cares? <laughs> oh, yeah. You understand? And yeah. if I can answer that, then I'll do the topic, you know. But if yeah. I can't, then why do it, you know? Sure. So I think right now, like, there's a lot of DJs that make everything about themselves and mm. they've lost the true meaning of what radio uh, is meant to be and what it's about. Uh, so I think it just needs to evolve and move at times, but it will never die. Yeah. Never. So? Nah, man, it won't die. Like Meg said, it's free. You want the radio in the car, it's there. It's not cumbersome to tune into uh, the radio. Mm. And then, obviously, with the advent and the success of podcasting, then even program managers, you know, uh, yeah. uh, look, they're no longer going to say who's famous. I heard someone complaining on Twitter um, at some point that they wanted a job on radio at the SABC and they were asked, how many followers do you have on, on Twitter, right? But now, when podcasts are doing so well, people... The, the management isn't going to look for someone with a following. They're going to look for someone who can, who's good, you know, yeah. and who can go toe to toe. A with, communicator. With a communicator who can yeah. go toe to toe with the Mac, with the Salt on the yeah. podcast, but on the radio. Yeah. And what that will do is then filter the kids who are really talented to get the opportunities without having to build a profile first. Because some just want to do radio. They don't want to be on TV, present a show, do all these five other things. And there seems to be this notion that you need to do that. You need to be some what of a celebrity in other fields or be doing other things mm, to land mm. a gig on radio, you know, and then it becomes like the radio is a spare thing that someone does, whereas we need people who are passionate yeah. who are going to ask the relevant questions before doing a show and opening the mic, like Mac just said, who cares, yeah, you know, yeah. and back to the, 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 the art form uh, that is radio. So now, nah, man, radio is not going anywhere. Not in Africa, especially, you know, when so many people still don't have internet. Um, but but it doesn't give you the freedom that you do have on podcasts, does it? It does. And I think that's why radio is harder to do than uh, uh, than podcasting. Uh, because on podcasting, it's easy to say whatever the case may be, you know. Yeah. But um, on radio, you got to find smart ways to ask the same question. That's right. You know, so I think that's where the intellect and the skill comes in and the craftsmanship. So for me, it's a challenge to do radio, which is something that I really, really enjoy. Yeah. Where as opposed to a podcast, you can just say whatever's on your mind and, you know, because yeah. of the freedom. So I think it's easier if, if I'm not mistaken. So. No, no, you're right. Um, radio is very tough because like you just said, you, you can send a message 
And on the on on the podcast, you can be lazy about how you say it because you're yeah. free. You can yeah, even yeah. you know say a word you're not supposed to say. But on the radio, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna hold on to uh, um, that messaging and not say it because now you need to find fa- good ways of saying it? Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like when you talk and you've got s- certain things we're talking about, you are aware that people are in the car with their parents. Yeah. Then you are speaking to the adults. Sure. On a podcast, you can just say the uh, certain words, but on the radio, you need to be smart about how you say them. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, radio is definitely tougher, definitely tougher. And also, on the radio, you've got a time limit. Sure. So a link maybe needs to be less than a minute. Yeah. And you need to be succinct and very economical with your words, but that's still right. hit the nail on the head with yeah. your messaging. So that's way tougher than shooting for three. You hours. should be having a tougher challenge. Um, when it comes to this, especially maybe in the beginning of you coming back to radio, of knowing how long to take it either on air or on a podcast. Like you just said now, on on, 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 on radio, on air, you need to be something straight to the point. Yeah. On podcast, you can be elongated. Yeah. Have you found yourself a little bit in trouble with that? Always. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Susan will tell you, I am wordy, man. I can be very wordy. You know, and all things, I'm so obsessed with saying things the right way. Even yeah, on the yeah. podcast, though, I can find myself repeating myself, you know? Yeah. Because I'm like, no, 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 there's a better way I must say this. Yeah. So, yeah, like yeah. the interview we did yesterday with the MEC, he'd ask a question three times, and I'm like, okay, so let us speak. Get your answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I can be very wordy. I'm a, yeah, okay. I, I over-explain. I think I was meant to be a teacher. I over-explain yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. I really do, and I love explaining stuff yeah. um, to people so that they get it the way I get it. So sometimes that can be a problem, even on the podcast, even at home. Meg G, why so? I mean, you could have chosen anyone. You could have chosen Fresh. He was out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> what a week. <laughs> Whoa, what a week. <laughs> what a week. <laughs> I mean, I think the stars were aligned. I can't explain that. I think it was just God doing his magic, you know. Because as soon as Saul walked in the room uh, and, and we had finished shooting, the stars were aligned. The yeah, energy man. was... And it's been, it's been um, like that since. Since we started working. Since the first uh, show, if you go back, the energy has been the same. I, I don't even think we've had a, an altercation. Eh? Now nah, we've never had a fight. Really? Oh, no, we've nah, never. Zero. Boring. <laughs> About like, nah, like... I mean, I think it's because there's so much respect in what we do. But did you we guys work together before? Zero. No, in zero. the same building. So hence my question. He how, to, he how did you even know? know the living daylights out of me, this guy? I, hey. I couldn't stand him at YFM. I've as soon as walk, so walked in the building, I'd walk out. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've worked with everyone I used to annoy. Even Daniel Radhag, I used to annoy her at YFM. Mo Flav, I used to annoy him big time at YFM. So Why? Because of, so, your, so because, of, because of your volume? I was an intern, but the loudest in the building. Jeez, you know, son. and had energy for days, which I still do. So yeah. I, I think yeah, it's that. And to some people, some people hate noise, and it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it didn't come from a bad place. It's like, oh, here's this kid. Right? So... I think he's right, man. It was just alignment. Um, I loved you. I loved. Man. I loved your energy from day one, bro. Same everything. here. Soul. Same here. Uh, I remember. I was like, I remember meeting him at Nick Hallway, and there he was, and I screamed, <laughs> Soul! And he didn't see who because I think he was coming out of an Uber and trying to adjust his eyes, walking in, and then he says, Ah, T. And but that's the thing for me. Um, yes, you, I mean different stroke for different folks but i still i still marvel at the fact that at people like you mac who are able to see talent you know what i mean yeah and which one to work with yeah i mean it's not like it's a radio station you are giving a co-host yeah you decided so i think people and worse from an annoyed point of view from an annoyed stance yeah no, I think people give me way too much credit, man. It really wasn't that deep. It was a matter of energy. It was just like, oh, this is dope, and then we do it. And that's what we do on, 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 the, on the network, you know. If yeah. it sounds dope uh, and we the energies are aligned and we think it's cool, uh, then we do it. Yeah. But I just wanted to add, like, I think people don't understand that uh, if anyone has the opportunity to be in the presence of Saul, mm. 
they're very lucky because he's a ball of energy oh, yeah. and he's genuine and he gives so much to people. Warm, yeah. And 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 I, I mean, I'm blessed to be with him wow. and work with him every single week. I mean, sometimes oh, I look on the other, uh, at, at my chain, I look at him while he's talking. I'm like, my goodness, this guy is amazing. <laughs> no, 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 I can see you yeah. I can see you yeah, 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 fanning. You know what I mean? I'm like, wow, <laughs> he's a fan. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and that comes out on camera. You ah, know? He's brilliant. I tell him all the time. Because it's genuine. You know? I don't, you, he'll tell you. I don't waste time. I tell him all the time. You're brilliant. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. It. Appreciate yeah. It. Wait a minute. You're going to need your headphones, bro. Okay. What's going on? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I got a scoop here. <coughs> Malal. <laughs> hey, Tom. Hi, Jack. <laughs> yeah, you know who's here. So, there's two things, right? Um... Uh, a lot of people, because of the, access, the success of the podcast... Oh, this is Caesar. Yo, what up, sis? <laughs> what up, sis? <laughs> what up? <laughs> you know? So so people always assume that Mac G is like a mastermind that he said and he planned this whole thing. Yeah. And maybe he is a mastermind, but he certainly didn't plan it. I remember, for example, when he started the podcast, as he said, it was very much on a whim. He's like, ah, you know, I'm doing this new podcasting. Ah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Just because he had downtime, you know? And yeah. I, and I, and I always think, maybe he'll tell you, he always thought that he would get another radio gig maybe in a year mm. and then drop his whole thing and go start all over again, yeah, you know? Yeah, he's nodding. So that's the one thing. Uh, and then Saul, he's 100% correct about Saul. Everybody advised. Because Saul has no inner voice. I always tell you. He's trying to simulate his voice. It's almost like Saul can't hear himself talk. So then he speaks at an amplitude of like 35. And you're like, no, dude, just drop it a little bit. Like, we can all hear you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so he was busy that. But I do remember a time where Mac was annoyed with Saul. They weren't fighting, but he was annoyed. So yeah. the, the energy wasn't matching. There was uh, probably the roughest show where Mac had interviewed Choop Choop. Okay. And then, uh, you know, then Twitter went crazy. And the following week, he was doing a show. And Mac, he delivered like a monologue. Oh, and it was very sincere. It was in the process of delivering this monologue. Then Saul dropped the joke. He dropped the pun. <laughs> then Mac was like, "Saul, no, no, not now, John, not now." I remember that episode. I remember that episode. I remember that episode. <laughs> I was like, "This is this is not the time for you." <laughs> Because yeah, 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 like yeah, I've got everything. Yeah. I've written it down here. <laughs> now everything's gonna get lost in the puns. <laughs> no puns today. Oh, yeah. Party shot, uh, Caesar. To these two, I mean, I think they are just a marvel. No, I mean they are. Uh, and before I even started working with Soul, I used to always speak to the guys pretty frequently. Mm. Uh, Mac knows. I'm actually super proud of what they've been able to do. Yeah. And funny enough, this is only the beginning. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't yeah. even tell you what else is going to come because I myself have no idea. Oh, yeah. But I just, uh, I know this is only the beginning. And the podcast, one day we'll look at it and this will just be like the footnote. True that. Uh, oh, of true. everything that they're going to achieve. True that. All the best, Malala. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that is Dinangwe the there. Yeah, man. And shout out to Caesar, man. He's like a brother I never had from yeah. the first time I met him uh, when we were at, when he was at MTV and um, I used to play at... Um, their gigs like in Nigeria and oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Mozambique. That's why I met him. Okay. And then we worked together at Y um, and then we worked together at, at 947 as well. Mm. But he's always been like a brother I never had. He's always like when I'm messing around, he'll yeah. tell me, call me to order. When I lost my job for the first time, he's actually the only person, well, Mo Flavor called me, but not in a different, on a different energy. With a different tone. With yeah. a different tone. But yeah. he was the only one who called me from the station and was like, listen, keep your head up. You're good at what you do. You'll mm. bounce back. Just uh, stay calm and focus on your family for now, but don't worry about it, you know? Even with all the successes, he always calls me and, and, and advises me, even in personal stuff, you know, like, because sure. he's good with money, so I always yeah, call him. I'm like, yeah. yo, how, what, should I, what should I do with this? So shout out to Caesar. He's a real one, man, and I always say how that. How much money have you time, made so far? Ah, uh, not a lot, Chief. Yeah, there's a lot of expenses. I got to pay so, man. Have you seen how much so wants? <laughs> from, from from that YouTube, how much are you making per month? Ah, uh, it's not a lot. Like it, it's it's enough to cover um, our overheads. I but hear that. How much? Ah, uh, it's not a lot. I know it's not a lot, <laughs> but how much? The <laughs> <laughs> me. How much? Must I ask this three times? Like I'm asking an an MMC. Uh, come on. I mean, no, it's enough to get by. 
But there isn't, literally, there is, you know, there's a misconception that there's money in YouTube. There isn't money in YouTube. Uh, YouTube is a good, I call it like a billboard. So it's a good advertising platform for other things that can generate money for you. So, for example, I use it to promote grandeur, uh, which is my gin. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, I make money. But on YouTube, literally, there isn't much money to make. Have you made a million yet? Uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That answers it. <laughs> <laughs> Mac G, let me tell you, I still have Saul's CD that he released via native uh, 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 rhythm. For real? I still have it. He refuses wow. to sign it for me, by the way. I did, didn't I? No, you didn't. Do you, re- do you remember refused. signing it? You refused. Uh, well, you brought it and I signed it. No, you didn't. What did I, I can't, Do you want me to I, bring it now? Yeah. Okay. I'll sign it now. I think we didn't have a pen. <laughs> Who should have a pen? A marker. Ah. <laughs> Uncle T, you must bring a marker. <laughs> hey, Jaga, tell me about this song. Yeah, oh, man, Jaga. this song. Oh, man, this song. Hey, Jaga. Hey, Jaga. Hey, Jaga. Hey, Jaga. Hey, That's the shit. That's funny. That's funny. Oh, that's the... <laughs> it's wrapping off now. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> what about I say? Mother say Iyaga. Iyaga. Yeah, it's Iyaga, man. Oh, isn't that's that Iyaga, master? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. No, man. This song, it's, it's so I sampled one of my favorite uh, house songs from a, a, while, a while back, um, added chords as I was making the beat, and then I had the idea, um, laid down some vocals with my voice, Ngipimba. And uh, Marumba were like, yo, we're having a, a, a thing. We would like to work with you, and we're having a recording camp. Can you please come through? And then I played the song for them. I played a, a few other songs yeah. that I've been working on, and then that's the one you know, uh, that they gravitated towards. Omit, uh, who's their producer, you know, took it, and because they could hear that I, his piano, you know, his piano is a bit... And then, yeah, they log drummed it, but still kept the same chords that I used sure, yeah. and the same bass line, and, yeah, the rest, everybody else was there soul jam was there the singer marseille was also at the camp and then i took it home and everybody else i added in my studio oh wow now the best radio advice or carry advice you've ever received mcg um the there was uh john robbie john robbie what and uh, no, not him not him not oh. him uh the, the there's a guy who used to run john robbie's desk Okay. Right. So when I was doing graveyard, um, he would come in at like three in the morning. So every time I'd go home, we'd always bump I into the, the name. He yeah, always I mentioned it on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah he always mentioned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'd always meet up with him on the lift. And I'm like, so how long have you been doing this for? And he was like, 30 years. I'm like, oh my goodness. How do you do that? Like yeah, longevity, yeah, yeah. like what's the secret? Yeah. Mm. And he told me one thing that was very, very simple and I carry it till, till this day. And I mean, I even uh, uh, told Saul when we first met and he said, I just come to work. I'm like, oh yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it simple. takes. Just come to work, just show, show up. up. Show up. That's show up. it, you know what I mean? Show up. So that's what I keep telling Saul. I'm like, dude, no matter what happens with the podcast, whether we get backlash or people want to cancel us or we have a dope show or we get a million views or a hundred views or whatever, we just have to upload. That's our job, literally. All we have to do is upload. And do the best that we can. And that's the sure. mantra that I live by. And oh. if you look at a lot of podcasts, because people think it's easy. And if you look at a lot of podcasts, they fail. Not because the person isn't talented. They're not doing great. It's the inconsistency. You say you're going to upload on Monday or Tuesday. You don't upload. Three weeks later, there's an episode. The other week, there's no episode. You know, so just keep at it and just upload. Just show up, man. Exactly. Guys, thank you. Thank you. Man, that was short. I know. It's radio. Ish. <laughs> We have to be succinct. <laughs> yes. Shut and sweet. Yes. Shut and sweet. Ish, 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 I wish ish, I could do a three hours like, a, you know, podcast and chill, but hey. Uh, that'd be crazy. Ah, yeah. Come over, come over. Come through. Yeah, when are you coming to the podcast? You see, that's why you call me Uncle T. I call you to my show. Thank you. Yeah. G, keep shining, papi. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you for showing us what's possible. Yeah. And most, most importantly, you are a living example that no means yes. Yeah, yeah. And for that, keep shining, my brother. Yeah, but I could have done this alone, man. Thanks to the team. Thanks to the chillers. Like, yeah. um, I mean, everything that me and Saul have right now is all because of the chillers. Yeah. So we're really, really grateful, really thankful, yeah. and long may it continue. All right. Saul, 
The guy who ran John Robbie's desk is Darius. 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 Yes. Yes. There you yeah. go. Shout out to Paul on Thank Twitter. I'm on Twitter, but I also yeah. remember. Fed check, is that you? Uh, yeah, that's me, boy. I'm Fed check here. I got your back, boys, my boy. Uh, nah, man, look. Um, shout out to, to the chillers, man. Like, I think, like Max said, they changed our lives. Yeah. Like, literally changed our lives. Stuck with us through everything. You yeah. know what I mean? Through yeah. thick and thin. Um, and at times, maybe they may disagree. Not all the episodes are 10 out of 10, sure. you know, but they've always given us a, a chance and, and always yeah. have our yeah. back. Um, and, yeah, we are because of them, man, and shout out. And, yeah, they must support others as well, man. You know, True. I think yeah, they're a it. testament of what could happen as black people if we support one another. Oof, yeah. You know, if oh, we, yeah. If we buy that Grandeur, you know, if you yeah. buy that cologne that's black owned, that jeans, that sneaker, yeah. everything, they are a true testament, man. And I, I really wish on the night we had all the sponsors that who had ditched us or not wanted to touch us to just be in the room mm. and feel the power and the magic of what happens as well. How they felt it, that's for sure. <laughs> they you know, felt it. when we support one another, man. Yeah. So, yeah, that was magical. And I think we can have a lot of uh, uh, podcasts and chills out there, not in a form of podcast but in the form of products sure. in the form of a loving community you know yeah, in yeah, the yeah. form of peaceful gatherings so many other things i think you know chillers have shown that it's possible to do it as black people Meg G, quick one let's see if you can still do radio yes 30 second link you have a new song in that yes 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 tell us about it i'm gonna play it in the next hour Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so um, uh, just to, before I do the link, uh, just to add some context, like I come from the school of YFM, you know, uh, mm. being around your freshies, your DJ smooths. Yeah. And what they taught me is that when you are blessed, you need to bless others, you know. Wow. So when you have a platform, you need to give other people the same platform. That's so that's right. what I try to do with the music. As much as I can make my own music, it's not as great as the music that, um, you know, I'm releasing with these guys. So mm. my plan with the music is to give a spotlight on the producers that I like the music at the time that's right so right now it happens to be team and i say because i know if i put my name on his album or music mm. it changes his life you know sure. he can provide for his family so we've got an album coming out uh next week it's called oh, piano nice. and chill uh this oh, cool. is uh, a single that from from the album featuring gugu and star healer one of my favorite mm -hmm. uh i forgot the name of the song because i was really 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 <laughs> they did it what's it called imizoyam imizoyam yeah i'll hook you up don't yeah worry. thank you <laughs> <laughs> but it's my favorite song from the album, so yeah. yeah. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Imi Zoyam, uh, Team Man, I say, Mag G, dropping 11th August, Piano and Chill. All Even right. if you adopt a child, you must always remember their name. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Okay, so. uh, a rich man's world.